Cornerstone presents Into the Deep. What does God expect of me? Matthew chapter 18 verses 2 through 4 says, Be like children. So Jesus called a child to come and stand in front of them and said, I assure you that unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven is one who humbles himself and becomes like this child. Some words to remember. St. Aloysius Gonzaga says, It is better to be a child of God than king of the whole world. We are all God's children, of course, but the primary and most important way to officially embrace and live out this identity is to be baptized. No matter what age, by receiving Christian baptism, we become children in God's family. Through water and the Holy Spirit, we are made a new creation. Throughout the scriptures, water is a powerful symbol for deliverance and drowning of sin. Water represents the death of the old and the birth of the new. From the waters of the flood in Noah's time to the Israelites passing through the waters of the Red Sea to escape slavery, and Jesus himself was submerged in water and baptized by John. Jesus didn't need to be made clean from sin, however, but he himself made the water clean by entering it. Remember, any Christian of any denomination baptized with water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is baptized in Christ. There is no repeating it, and you can't undo it, which is pretty good news. The Rite of Baptism In the Rite of Baptism, there are a few symbols for us to notice. The first one is the intent of the parents and water. The parents speak for the infant and agree that they will raise the child as a Christian with the help of the godparents. This consent is made complete when the child grows up and receives the sacrament of confirmation, which they choose themselves. The anointing after baptism. In the Old Testament, oil was poured over the head of every newly commissioned priest, prophet, and king as a symbol of sending them out to change the world. Since Jesus is all three of these, and we are baptized into his ministry and mission, each child is anointed and set out as a priest, a prophet, and a king. These are called the offices of Christ. The white garment represents becoming a brand new creation. We are called to bring it unstained into eternal life. Finally, the baptismal candle is handed to the godparents, which they light off the Easter candle. This symbolizes that they are promising to carry the light of Christ before the child as they lead and help them through their Christian life. Okay, are you ready to go into the deep? What does God expect of me? So, you've been anointed at baptism, commissioned at confirmation, you're receiving the Eucharist weekly on Sunday, you do your best to follow the Ten Commandments, what else is there? Let's take a deeper look at what it means to be a child of God. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, You have been told, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, only to do justice, to love goodness, and to walk humbly with your God. Remember the three offices of Christ, priest, prophet, and king? The command from Micah fits quite well with these. You have been anointed as a priest. No, not as a Catholic ordained priest who preaches and hears confessions, but as a little p priest. A primary role that a priest does is to do justice by offering sacrifices and prayers for the family, the community, and the world. What would your life look like if you lived each moment as a priest or one who offers sacrifice? What sacrifices would you make for the good of others? How would your prayer life change? You've been anointed as a prophet. A prophet is not someone who tells the future, but rather a messenger from God to reveal his love and truth to the world. Everyone who is baptized is called to live in the way that speaks of the goodness of God by proclaiming the good news at all times, by loving at all times. And when something is broken, you do not treat it harshly. For instance, if someone you know is doubting or sinning or not living as a true child of God, we are called to show them mercy. This goes for ourselves, too. You have been adopted and anointed to live as a king or queen. 
kings and queens are powerful rulers, but we are called to rule with Christ in the kingdom of heaven one day. This means we follow Jesus' example. Christ, the king of the universe, humbled himself enough to come as a baby into the world to save us. We are called to be like kings, like Jesus, but Jesus was the exact opposite of an earthly king. No earthly king would wash the muddy, disgusting feet of his friends like he did at the Last Supper. No earthly king would willingly die to save his friends. This is how we can humbly walk with God and be a servant leader to all we meet. This Advent, we invite you to reflect on how you can more deeply walk as an anointed, baptized, commissioned child of God and live how Jesus did, as a priest, a prophet, and a king. Cornerstone. Follow. Guide. Lead.